Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. The topic of today's lecture is herpes virus infections in humans. We all know that there are eight herpes viruses, type 1 to type 8. So in this lecture, I'll try to include all the eight herpes virus infection. But the most important ones are definitely uh, herpes virus 1, 2, and 3. Herpes virus. The herpes virus group consists of relatively large enveloped DNA viruses. They replicate within the nucleus and produce typical intranuclear inclusion body. So just remember that the viral inclusions in case of herpes virus is intranuclear. They are subgroups according to genome similarities into alpha, beta, and gamma herpes virus. Eight members of the group infect humans. A feature of infection by members of herpes virus group is absence of virus elimination following a clinical recovery. So the virus is capable of persisting in a person life as a latent infection in the cells for which the strain is specific. Under certain circumstances, especially the immunosuppression or uh, when there is stress, physical as well as mental, the virus become reactivated and comes to the skin. Now the first herpes virus, which is also named as herpes simplex virus, and there are two types of herpes simplex virus, herpes, uh, human herpes virus one and two. Caused by this herpes virus hominis is one of the commonest infection of humans throughout the world. Two major types, which are antigenically different um, in some way among each other. The type one causes facial infection and type two genital infection, although now, there is a considerable overlap between the two infections. Both type 1 and type 2 are acquired by direct contact or droplets from infected secretion entering via the skin or mucous membranes, where the primary infection becomes evident. Establishment of latent infection is common with these viruses, and this virus persists in ganglion of sensory nerves innovating the primary infectious site. The virus produce no viral proteins when latent and can therefore remain undetected by host defense mechanism for months and years. From this condition of latency, the virus may travel peripherally along the nerve fibers and replicates in the skin or mucous membrane causing a recurrent disease. The primary type one infection occurs mainly in infants and young children and is usually minimal and often subclinical. Type two infection occurs mainly after puberty and is often sexually transmitted because it affects the genital mucosae. The primary herpes simplex virus two infection is more commonly symptomatic. Pain is a very common association with herpes simplex virus two infection. Overall transmission rate between couples average between four to 30% annually. Apparent increase in proportion of genital infections by herpes simplex virus 1 may be attributed to orogenital contact. And it is mandatory here to mention that herpes simplex virus infection transmitted by sexual contact is much more common in Western world as compared to, uh, as compared to our uh, part of the world where gonorrhea and syphilis take a lead. Trauma facilitate the transfer of virus to fully keratinized skin. So usually uh, the place where the virus become reactivated is usually uh, the genital mucosa because, uh, where there is a little bit of trauma, uh, which can be because of the intercourse. The source may be endogenous auto inoculation, for example, to finger, especially in nail biters or thumb suckers or exogenous inoculation as we see in healthcare workers. Following a primary infection, humoral and cell-mediated immune response take place. 
The cell-mediated immune response is probably more important. However, it do not fully protect against the reinfection or the recurrent disease. The acquisition of herpes simplex virus at a new site in a patient previously infected is referred to non-primary first episode infection, where immunity is deficient either congenitally or due to disease or drug. Both primary and recurrent herpetic infection may be increased in frequency and severity and may run a prolonged or atypical course. A maternal primary genital infection at the time of birth before the maternal immune response has taken place is transmitted to infant in about 50% of the cases and neonatal infection may be severe and fatal. So this is very important that if a primary genital infection occurred in a mother bearing a child, then there is, it is must that this infection will be transmitted to the child because the immunity antibodies are not present. The antiviral treatment and cesarean section delivery should be considered in above case. Primary infection earlier in third trimester may cause fetal growth retardation and prematurity. So primary oral herpes in late pregnancy does not carry such risk for baby. So both uh, the primary infection at time of birth and in third trimester require to be treated by antiviral treatment. Clinical features, the primary infection. It occurs in previously seronegative individuals and is often subclinical. When the clinical lesions develop, the severity is generally greater than, the, than in the recurrence. So just the first point is that the primary infection is usually subclinical. But if the clinical lesions develop, then its severity is always more than the subsequent or recurrent lesions. Herpetic gingivostomatitis. It is common in children between one to five years, but is also well recognized in adults. Incubation period is short, five days. Stomatitis begin with high-grade fever, malaise. Gums are swollen, inflamed, and bleed easily. We see grouped vesicles on tongue, pharynx, palate, and buccal mucosa. Vesicles develop into shallow ulcers with yellow pseudomembranes. The, if you see the patient in the ulcerated stage, then the ulcers will also be seen in a group uh, fashion, which is diagnostic. Regional lymph nodes are enlarged and tender. And after three to five days, fever subsides and complete recovery take place in two weeks. Encephalitis is a rare complication. This is how the group vesicles in herpes simplex look like. And even on the tongue, the grouping is quite evident here, here. And these ulcers are shallow and painful. Then the herpes genitalis. Herpes genitalis is primarily infection of herpes simplex virus 2. Start as painful group vesicles that may be preceded by a general, mal general malaise and fever. Ulceration develop later. The ulcers are frequently on the glands, prepuces, and shaft of penis. They are sore and painful and last for two to three weeks if untreated. In more male homosexuals, herpes simplex is common in perianal area and may extend into the rectum. In female, similar lesions occur on exter external genitalia and mucosa of vulva, vagina, and cervix. Pain and dysuria are common. Ulcerative cervicitis is a common complication. Here you can see the uh, human herpes simplex virus type 2 on the glands and shaft of the penis. And here you can see it on the uh, labia in a female and vagina, vulva and vagina. Then keratoconjunctivitis. Primary herpes infection of eye causes severe and often prolonged conjunctivitis with opacity and superficial ulceration of the cornea. You can see the group vesicles here on the upper lid and it gradually enters into the, um, into the sclera and the cornea causing haziness. The eyes are grossly edematous and there be vesicles on the surrounding skin. The pre-auricular glands are enlarged and tender. Inoculation herpes simplex. Direct inoculation into an abrasion or into a normal skin give rise to an indurated plaque 
with super added bully and scattered vesicles after an incubation period of 5 to 7 days the regional nodes are enlarged but fever and constitutional symptoms are usually mild inoculation of fingertips results in herpetic vitello which is painful deep vesicles coalesce to give a honeycomb appearance as you can see in the picture multiple crops of vesicle and pustules on the face scalp and upper trunk have occurred in wrestlers this is called as herpes gladi gladiatorum facial contact during rugby is another recognized mean of acquiring herpes called as the scrum pox neonatal herpes infection in mothers at the time of delivery makes the risk of transmission to baby during vaginal delivery very high i have already mentioned this the effect on the baby range in severity and is limited to skin eye mouth and may lead to disseminated disease if infection is disseminated there is likely to be lethargy seizures respiratory distress hepatosplenomegaly with hepatitis and thrombocytopenia even after treatment with acyclovir relapse of neonatal herpes is common complications herpes simplex virus complicate as ex, uh, eczema herpeticum pharyngitis headache and meningitism encephalitis with high mortality radicular neuropathy seen primarily in anogenital infection which is characterized by sacral paresthesias urinary retention constipation and impotence disseminated infection may occur in immunodeficient and herpes simplex virus hepatitis is rare in adults but is a fatal complication recurrent infection already told you that herpes has a cap uh, as a capacity or capability of a latent infection after first infection whether symptomatic or subclinical there may be no further clinical manifestation through the life throughout the life or the recurrence is seen in 50% of the cases in type 1 and more than 95% of cases with type 2 infection the recurrence is triggered by minor trauma infection febrile illness urti ultraviolet radiation intracranial operation dental surgery dermabrasions or laser resurfacing and other aesthetic procedure so it is better to take the history of recurrent herpes infection before you uh, undertake any aesthetic procedure in uh, in a patient recurrent infection differs from primary infection in that the lesions are of a smaller size and they are close grouping and usually absence of constitutional symptoms pain may be present but fever and malaise is usually absent itching or burning uh, precede by an hour or two for the development of closely set vesicles the eruption may be painful at the onset or pain may last for few days the recurrence tend to be in the same region but not always on the identical site so the region can be the same but site is not the same recurrence is of shorter duration than the initial primary infection complications of recurrence asymptomatic shedding of herpes simplex virus 2 is more frequent than herpes virus 1 and correlates with frequency of symptomatic recurrences so cranial nerve palsies may occur sometimes with each eruption radi neuralgic pain may precede each recurrence which is called cause called as the moriac syndrome eczema herpeticum can be associated in recurrent infection of eye keratoconjunctivitis dendritic ulcers disciform or hypopion keratitis and hydrocyclus cyclitis may all develop lymphedema and secondary leukoderma also develop erythema multiforme in this is very common in 65% of patient with recurrent em there is a history of preceding herpes labialis by several days but occasionally coinciding treatment in patient uh, in treatment of the patient in prodromal stage that is five days course of acyclovir will often prevent the development of erythema multiforme bell's palsy it is suggested that bell's palsy is due to viral reactivation of herpes simplex virus or varicella zoster virus this fact is strengthened by detection of herpes simplex virus genome by pcr in saliva facial nerve and muscle tissue in the patients the use of appropriate antiviral should be considered in early management of bell's palsy the recurrent lymphocytic meningitis a benign form of aseptic meningitis that lasts for 3 to 14 days and may recur at interval of months or years and associated with herpes simplex virus the encephalitis can occur after virus has established the latent has established the latent infection 
Rapid diagnosis by PCR and treatment is essential to minimize the mortality and morbidity. Diagnosis. Histopathology is characteristic. Whenever in doubt, take a biopsy. The primary infection can be distinguished by seroconversion or a rise in antibody titer. Recurrence tend to produce little change in antibody titer. The primary infection is usually characterized by high IgG, IgM, and later on, uh, IgG level is increased. The culture of virus from the vesicle fluid usually requires one to five days, not, not routinely done. For more rapid diagnosis, viral antigen is detected by immunofluorescence in the sample from the lesion, and viral is, virus can be seen by electron microscopy. This is also a, not a common investigation that, which is to be done. PCR is, however, uh, commonly do, uh, done nowadays and is a rapid diagnostic method, which is also highly sensitive. So this is the uh, histopathological appearance of herpes virus infection. You can see a large intraepidermal vesicle with residual keratinocyte showing intracellular edema, ballooning degeneration, and acanthalysis. So uh, this picture is very similar to any acanthalytic disorder and it will be difficult to distinguish it from PAM figures, but the distinguishing features will be number one, these <coughs> intranuclear inclusions, see the blue dots, and multinucleated giant cells. These giant cells are of keratinocyte origin, they are not histocytes, and um, they are, um, the keratinocyte diffuse with each other, and you can see viral inclusions here. So these are the multinucleated giant cells. So uh, immunohistochemistry of herpes simplex virus is available and can be done in case of doubts. This is how the herpes virus look like. Uh, all members of herpes virus look like in, on electron microscopy. The treatment, the use of topical antiseptic agent to reduce the risk of secondary bacterial infection. In severe primary infection or troublesome recurrent disease, antiviral oral therapy should be instigated. Acyclovir. After triple phosphorylation, this drug is incorporated into the DNA where it interferes with the action of DNA polymerase and acts as a chain terminator. Resistance of herpes simplex to acyclovir has not been significant till now. The, the resistance is usually due to change in or loss of viral thymidine kinase. Acyclovir is a proven clinical value against herpes simplex and varicella zoster viruses, although the later is somewhat less sensitive to it and require higher dose. Acyclovir has not no effect on establishment of virus latency and rate of recurrence, but it is said that earlier the treatment is given in primary infection, there are lesser chances of latency. Treatment should be started as soon as possible. The usual dose is five milligram per kilogram, eight hourly intravenously. Though twice, uh, though twice that dose has been used for neonatal herpes and encephalitis. Slow infusion of one hour is adequate in adequately hydrated um, patient is recommended. The drug is excreted by the kidneys and so the dose must be scaled down in renal failure. For less severe infection, the usual oral dose is 200 milligram five times daily for five or more days, but 400 milligram thrice a day is also used with success. In children, the oral suspension gave, given at 15 milligram per kg five times a day for seven days. Usually one teaspoonful of oral acyclovir contained 200 milligram. Then there are newer drugs among which femcyclovir is commonly available in the market and they are chemically related to acyclovir and have same mechanism of action. They are the precursor drug and absorb better than acyclovir from the oral dose. The advantage of these drugs is that uh, lesser number of uh, tablets are to be taken for the treatment. Well cyclovir, 1000 mg given twice a day and fem cyclovir, 250 mg given thrice a day for five to seven days. Have a similar effect than a cyclovir. Then treatment of recurrent disease. Recurrent herpes labialis may need no treatment if attacked are mild and infrequent, usually topical and a cyclovir is sufficient. 5% cream. That reduces the discomfort but may not alter the healing. Oral acyclovir is started as soon as possible after the onset of symptom, then it shortens the duration and decreases the intensity of episode. If recurrence are frequent, long term prophylactic acyclovir in a dose of 200 to 400 milligram twice a day for four to six months may be considered, which, in, uh, some, which 
sometime increases the interval between the episode or may cure it. Well cyclovid 250 mg twice a day or 1 gram once a day or fem cyclovid 1 to 5 mg three times a day or 250 mg twice a day is also given for the suppression of recurrent attack. Post-exposure treatment. If infection can be prevented by intravenous or oral acyclovir, which should be continued throughout the period of greater risk. Prophylaxis against reactivation or spread of herpes simplex virus may be useful before the cosmetic laser treatment for the face. Initial, this should be done only in patients who have a history of frequent herpes and severe herpes. The initial eruption of genital herpes improves significantly with oral acyclovir, well cyclovir, and femcyclovir. Treatment of herpetic keratoconjunctivitis. Topical acyclovir is established value for herpetic keratic uh, keratitis, recurrent herpes labialis, and recurrent herpes genitalis. Topical pencyclovir compares favorably with acyclovir. Treatment of neonatal herpes. The primary herpes infection in mother at the time of delivery, the risk of infection to baby is greater. So the cesarean section is indicated and prophylactic acyclovir should be started. Primary genital herpes during third trimester treat the mother with oral acyclovir, although it's unclear if the risk of neonatal herpes is lessened, but the, this must be done. For a baby born to a mother with previous history of genital herpes, but no active lesion during pregnancy, or at delivery, the baby is monitored and tested for the presence of herpes on the skin due to symptomatic shedding. But the treatment, uh, but, uh, treatment of the neonate is not mandatory here. Neonatal herpes is treated with the uh, high dose of intravenous acyclovir. The dose is 60 mg per kg per day in three divided doses for two to three weeks, followed by oral acyclovir for six months. Third line and alternate treatment. In the treatment of severe herpes simplex infection, resistant to acyclovir systemic uh, phosphonoformate, which is also called as the phoscarnet, may be considered. The alternate antiviral is cidofovir, which act by blocking DNA replication. This can be administered syst uh, systemically, but is also active topically. Enhancement of immune response to herpes simplex virus could reduce the recurrence. Topical idoxuridine was historically used in treatment of herpes, but is superseded by safer and more effective antiviral drugs. Tyfluorothymidine <coughs> is also used, but its efficacy is uncertain. Topical imikimod and resikimod, which cause local release of cytokines and enhance the antigen presentation, have shown to reduce the frequency of reactivation episodes. Recurrence of herpes labialis may be reduced by intensity by use of topical sunscreens. Vaccine against herpes simplex virus. There is currently no available vaccine for herpes simplex 1 and 2. And preclinical and clinical phase trials currently are in development. Vaccines are being developed with two broad focuses, preventive and therapeutic, some with dual use. The preventive vaccine will focus on prevention of primary infection in seronegative subjects, and therapeutic vaccines aim to prevent herpes simplex virus reactivation, decrease the number of recurrence, or to reduce the severity and duration of clinical symptoms. Now, the third herpes virus. This is human herpes virus 3 or varicella zoster virus. The varicella zoster virus causes both varicella, chickenpox, and zoster shingles. The primary infection of varicella, which after which the virus persists in nerve ganglion, usually sensory. Zoster is the result of reactivation of this residual latent virus. So the primary infection is varicella, and the latent infection is the zoster. Varicella occurs throughout the world, but infection occur at a younger age in temperate zones compared to the tropics. Virus is transmitted by droplet infection from the nasopharynx of infected individual. The brief first viremic stage when the virus disseminates to other organs followed by a second viremia which coincides with the onset of the rash. So there is a first viremic stage and then there is a second viremic stage. Patients are infected to other from about 
day two before the uh, appearance of rash and five days after the onset and five days with the rash. And 60 to 100 percent of non-immune individuals will contact the infection. So it is highly infectious. And it is said that if you talk to a, um, to a herpes virus uh, infection, uh, sorry, chickenpox patient face to face, uh -huh. then within, uh, within one hour, you will get that uh, virus. And if um, two people are sitting in a normal room, distant from each other, one is having chickenpox, another is a normal non-immune individual, then he is liable to get the virus within two hours. Vesicle fluid contain large amount of viruses. The varicella confers lasting immunity and second attack are uncommon. Zoster is a sporadic affliction of indi individuals. It is uncommon in childhood and incidence increase with age. Zoster patients are infectious, both from the virus of the lesions and some instances nasopharynx. So a patient suffering from zoster can transmit virus from the nasopharynx and the individual who will catch this virus will develop chickenpox. Antibodies seem to have incomplete protective role. Maternal or administered antibody reduce the severity of infection but does not prevent it. The cell-mediated immunity is more important and in, both, and in both protection against and control of infection. Hence, when cell-mediated immunity is impaired, varicella and zoster both may be severe and occasionally fatal. And frequently complicated pneumonia, hepatitis, and encephalitis. In patients infected with herpes HIV, zoster is 10 times more common than in normal population. The maternal varicella in first 20 weeks of pregnancy is associated with approximately 2% risk of fetal damage, including skin lesions, central nervous system, and ocular defects and limb hypoplasia, with a 30% mortality within the first year of life. So it should always be treated. The maternal zoster in pregnancy is not associated with intrauterine infection because this is a latent infection. So the zoster in infancy has followed a maternal varicella. The baby's primary infection have occurred in means the baby primary infection has occurred in utero. If mother has varicella within four days before to two days after the term, the neonate would have no maternal antibody and the risk of severe varicella with mortality rate of 30% in absence of the treatment. So such baby should be treated immediately. The factor determining the site of eruption of zoster may be precipitated by pressure or on trauma of that nerve root by a new plastic deposits, radiotherapy, surgery. Pathology. In the skin, varicella, in, in skin, in varicella, cells of Malpighian layer shows, that is keratinocytes, show ballooning of their cytoplasm intracellular edema, multinucleated giant cells with up to 15 nuclei. So the pathological picture is almost similar to herpes simplex virus. Intracellular edema fall, form the vesicles, roof of which consists of upper Malpighian and horny layers. Zoster can cause some destruction of nerve fibers in the middle and lower dermis and partial denervation, which may persist for over a year, especially in patients with post-herpetic neuralgia. So these images show the acantholytic cells and multinucleated giant cells, both with intranuclear intrusions. Varicella. The incubation period of chickenpox is 14 to 17 days. After a day or two of fever and malaise, a fleeting scarlentiniform or morbelliform erythema is followed, developed, that is followed by development of macules, which very rapidly become tense, clear, unilocular vesicles. So the typical rash of varicella is maculovesiculopapular, sorry, maculovesiculopustular rash. So uh, from the macules, immediately vesicles are formed and papules do not form. The vesicles appear in three to five crops over two to four days. So this is also important that a crop of vesicles uh, develop and they start ev evolving uh, from a vesicle to pustule to crusted stage. And after one to two days, another crop forms. So because of these two to four crops in one individual, the lesions in all stage of healing are visible. 
that is some lesions which you see in a vesicle stage it will be of the new crop and those lesions which you will see of cresting stage will be of an old crop the uh, lesions are most numerous on the trunk then on the face and scalp with that was that is opposite to the smallpox and this distribution is centripetal a characteristic feature is the presence of lesions at different stage at each side within few hours the contents become turbid and pustules are surrounded by red areola in 2 to 4 days a dry crust forms and soon separates to leave a shallow pink depression which heal with scarring and this scarring becomes more prominent if the lesions are scratched by the patient total number of lesions are very variable but it can be few to profuse the vesicles are common in mouth especially on the palate and occasionally seen on other mucous membranes including conjunctiva and genitalia so a typical varicella appearance you can see the multiple uh, uh, vesicles and pustules on an erythematous base fever is variable in severity and duration constitutional symptoms tend to be proportionate to the fever in some patient pruritus is troublesome it may be one to two weeks for the disease to subside hyper and hyperpigmentation may persist for weeks and small round depressed scars occur in about 18% of the patients hemorrhagic vesicular varicella is relatively common in malnourished immunocompromised patients complications chickenpox is complicated by encephalitis often presenting with ataxia varicella pneumonia and hepatitis both are life threatening complications secondary infection can occur cutaneous gangrene which is called as varicella gangrenosa may follow secondary infection rhabdomyolysis is reported in association with varicella viral arthritis is described em and steven johnson syndrome occurring as a consequence of varicella infection varicella and immunocompromised patient may be severe and progressive with mortality of 7 to 10% the features of progressive varicella include hemorrhagic vesicles pneumonitis hepatitis and cephalitis and acute retinal necrosis syndrome chronic varicella with persistent hyperkeratotic lesions and repeated attack of varicella have also been observed so this is a very uh, rare occurrence but you should remember that chronic infection can also occur because traditionally it is thought that varicella is an acute infection herpes zoster or shingles the zoster is a segmental eruption due to reactivation of latent varicella zoster virus from a dorsal root nerve ganglion it is it is a sporadic affliction of individuals who have previously had clinical or subclinical varicella the zoster patients are infectious both from the virus in the lesions and in some instances the nasopharynx in susceptible contacts of zoster chicken pox can occur three phases of infection so uh, the first stage is the pre eruptive stage it presents as abnormal skin sensation or pain within the dermatome affected appears 48 hours prior to any obvious lesion and it is accompanied by headache general malaise and photophobia so this stage sometimes get prolonged to more than 3 or 4 days and sometime a patient present to surgeons with such kind of pain and many of time i have observed that the patient have undergone appendectomy operation or gall bladder surgery because of the pain Uh, which was actually the herpes zoster virus pain and the lesions of herpes zoster developed in the uh, post surgical post surgery in these patients so the acute eruptive phase is marked by vesicles and symptoms of pre eruptive phase the lesion start as macules and quickly transform into the vesicles the vesicles often rupture ulcerate and eventually crust patient are most infectious in this stage until the lesions dry out the phase lasts for 2 to 4 weeks but pain continues so this acute eruptive phase occur once it is not in a form of crops as we see in varicella zoster as we see in varicella so all the lesions in herpes zoster will be at same stage of healing then the third stage is the stage of post herpetic neuralgia this is characterized by pain that lasts for more than 4 weeks beside the pain patient experiences paresthesias 
shock-like sensations and dysthesias. The pain is disabling and lasts for 12 months or longer. Acute zoster. The first manifest manifestation of zoster is pain, which is the symptom that characterizes this infection. And it can be severe and accompanied by fever, headache, and malaise. Closely grow vesicles and then pustules develop. And occasionally two or more contagious, usually in one dermatome, but sometimes uh, one or more con contagious dermatome is also involved. Vesicles, they ap appear in um, uh, one to three crops over three to five days, sometimes. Mucous membranes within the affected dermatome is also involved. So you see the group vesicles in characteristic dermatomal distribution. New vesicles continue to appear for several days. Lymph nodes draining the affected area are enlarged and tender. Pain and constitutional symptoms generally as the eruption disappears. In uncomplicated cases, recovery is complete within two to three weeks in children and three to four weeks in older patients. In some patients, pain develops in a dermatomal pattern acutely, but is not followed by vesicular eruption. And this is called as zoster sign eruption. Frequency of thalamic zoster increase with old age. Rarely eruption is bilateral. And in 16% of patients with zoster vesicle develop beyond the dermatome involved. So this uh, comes in the category of disseminated zoster. Motor involvement. It occurs in overall 5% of the cases and usually follow the pain and eruption by a few days to few weeks, but occasionally preceded or accompanied, accompanies them. Facial palsy in herpes, zoster, orticus, and ocular or facial palsies develop in ophthalmic zoster. Uh, 